This is Daniel Cerrone, writer of Blacklister 98, Dr. Adrian Shaw, conclusion. You're listening to The Blacklist Exposed on Golden Spiral Media. Hey, Aaron, by the end of this podcast, we both die or we both live. It's up to you. Welcome to The Blacklist Exposed. I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. And I am Agent Aaron Peterson, and much like wrestler, I also received my surgical license on the streets with a Z. Yeah. Thanks for joining us as we conclude our discussion for number 98 on the blacklist, Dr. Adrian Shaw, which aired November 10th, 2016, it was written by Daniel Cerrone and directed by Michael Watkins. Show notes and other intel for this episode of The Blacklist Exposed can be found at theblacklistexposed.com. Troy... Some uh, couple big developments this week, wouldn't you say? I would say so. I, I believe all you told me before we started was lawyer up, Peterson. Um, <laughs> you ready to go to town over this or what? Theory battle royale about to ensue. <laughs> <laughs> huh. What? Uh, well, before we get into everything, and we're going to talk, we still got to answer your question from last week, and we're going to get into the, the episode in, in detail. Let me ask you what you thought overall of this mid-season finale, because we've got, what, a month, month and a half or so before the next episode. Was it enough to make you go, ah, what, and bring you back? Or was it enough to make you go, mm, what the hell, Blacklist? Where you at? Where do you sit? I'm at the point of I'm coming back just to see what happens with Kaplan next, because that was <laughs> oh the God. most that was the most interesting way to take her out in episode two, kind of drag it out to the end. And then luckily, she ended up doing exactly what we wanted her to do, which was escape on her own. So mm-hmm. I, I'm very curious, because now your thought of maybe she's a, a bad guy in the background in season six, seven, eight, nine, whenever it happens, is is a potential. And, and quite frankly, I'd like to see that. I don't think it is, though. Well, we'll talk about her more in detail, but yeah. I, don't, I don't think it is. But overall, the episode as a whole, what did you think of the episode? It was great. It was a, I was pins and needles the whole time. I love yeah. the, uh, the hospital breakout. Um, Tom, like... <laughs> It's a bomb. Get down. (laughs) (laughs) I was kind of bummed he didn't throw out a retort there. He's like, can you hear me now? I was just waiting for something like that. Oh, yeah. Some quippy liner to the guards laying on the ground. I'm like, man, come on. If you would have let me in, you wouldn't have died. Still pretty bummed we didn't get a Maury Povich cameo. Guys, really, this is like your one opportunity. You (laughs) missed it. What a whiff. All right, well, let's get into it. we got a lot to talk about and a lot to fight about. At some point during the show, there is a good chance Troy and I will argue. I want you to know we do it with love. Please don't write in and say, hey, guys, be nicer to each other. Because, yes. you know, screw this guy, all right? His theories are crazy, and everybody should know that. And that's the number one rule of the Blacklist Exposed, is that we respect all theories and all theory camps. You can be a Except little bit... Troy's. <laughs> Except Troy's. Except Troy. We added this. This is kind of like an amendment. Except Troy. Troy's. I am amassing an army just to let you know. <laughs> yeah, I was getting really irritated. People were jumping all over me. He's like, what are you going to do this week, Aaron? What are you going to do when Troy brings his theory up? I think it was proven. <laughs> do you? Do you really? <laughs> and, well, we're going to get there. And like all good it. theories, I'm going to tell my army, my posse, that it is not 100% confirmed. So keep the vitriol down just a little bit. We're close, but we're not there yet. Well, I yet. would say it's not even 2% confirmed, but whatever. Hey, everybody's got their thing. You know what I mean? <laughs> everybody's right. got their thing. All, all right. right. I, I mean, she, Katarina is a redhead, and they do call him red, so hey, it all connects. Sure. It sure does. All right. <laughs> Before we get into this a little bit more in detail, you got to answer the profiling question from last week, which was, how will Tom exit the show? Tiffany Chestnut says at one point, he's got to one answers about who he is as well. And he has the jumping off point. Why does everybody always want to know who they are? You know what? I'd just be like, all right, I'm good. I knew who I am. I'm not Aaron. That's good enough for me. Oh, that hurts. Uh, He has the jumping off point of knowing that Scotty is his mom. We know that he's going to be working with her group in the spinoff, so it follows reason that he's going to head to them for some purpose. Being that the title deals with redemption, he's either going to make a mistake so huge that he and Liz wind up splitting off for the time being until he can redeem himself. I like that. Or which I think is more likely, he will feel the need to undo all of his past mistakes and deserve the life that he wants. But it's going to be a solo journey. Good stuff. Uh, I can see Liz doing a cameo, or uh, Megan doing a cameo over there. I sure. can see that. Yeah, everything seems hunky-dory right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alex said, I think Liz will either encourage Tom to go work for his mom, Tom and Liz will get in a huge fight, and he'll go do his own thing, 
or it's tied to saving Liz Red or please God no Agnes. <laughs> Don't put the baby in jeopardy again. Or Liz. I would say Liz needs a reprieve for the rest of the season too. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Let's let's keep them both out of harm's way for a little bit. Maybe we can wait till season five on that. Tiffany Hans. Personally, I hope to see a rift created by Liz needing to save Red from Kirk. They fight after Red, uh, Red takes Liz's place when Tom says something like, what about our future? Our daughter. Liz argues that she can't just let Red die for her. She needs answers. She needs to needs to stick something in his neck because that's where everything needs to go. Apparently, when you torture Red, you stick things in his neck. Yep. That's just how you do it. She needs to go save Red. Tom walks her, watches her walk away from him, so he takes Agnes to get away from them. That would be interesting to see Tom take Agnes from Liz. That would be a nice twist. Uh, be bold, man. Bold. bold. Betsy Geiger, I think once Liz gets some answers about her past, Tom will feel compelled to do the same. That says he will stay married to Liz. I realize that the wedding ceremony was interrupted by Kirk's Hargraves wedding crashers, but Liz and Tom call each other husband and wife. I really love them together. Maybe Agnes will have some genetic condition from Tom's side of the family tree, so Tom will have to search for his roots in a twisted family sense. Uh, I call myself Tom Selleck. I'm not Tom Selleck. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just because they say they're married doesn't mean they are. Yep. Wendy Davis, and I do call myself Tom Selleck. If I could grow a mustache, I would totally go with that. Wendy Davies, uh, Tom finds out that Hargraves is in cahoots with Kirk all this time and sets off to go work with her to find out more. That or Howard Hargraves is being mentioned in, in tonight's episode, and he goes off in pursuit of that angle. That didn't happen. All right. Uh, and we should preference the reason why we're asking this question is we thought spinoff would be coming right away, but apparently we're getting more blacklist January 5th. That's going to be awesome. Troy thought it was coming right away. I did. I had no idea. I did. Mm-hmm. That's it's, what happened. You think you know everything about TV, mister. It's winter, man. It's winter. <laughs> uh, Liz will 100% verify from Linda Hood Cheney, verify tonight that she has no living parents. She wrong. And- <laughs> I think wrong. Sorry. Some people. Well, no, it's absolutely. I think wrong. I think yeah. wrong. Uh, she and Tom will be haunted that Agnes has one living grandparent and they have to do everything they can to facilitate that family relationship. So that's why Tom goes to go get the relationship established. There could also be a little taste of Liz meets Dom, Dom meets Agnes, and that interaction helps fuel Tom and Liz into wanting Agnes to more about every family member she can. And then Dom dies. That's so sad. <laughs> yeah, I really want Dom to come back. I do, too. I do. Uh, Barbara, I think both Liz and Tom will realize they are putting Agnes's life in danger and will give her up as Katarina did with Liz to protect her. That puts a strain on their relationship. Tom goes off to find out about his past as, as Liz continues to learn about hers. Only after they know who he or she is, can they bring Agnes back in the, into their lives safely. Oh, like Katarina gave up Liz to Sam. I got it. Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Marta says Tom goes to the spinoff because he. I find- see what you did there, by the way. I, I wasn't. I was just ignoring it. <laughs> I was waiting for you to comment. Uh, Marta said Tom goes to the spinoff because he finds out the reason Liz's maiden name is Scott. The implications of this are so shocking. Tom goes to work with Susan Scott Hargrave to confirm <laughs> the truth. <laughs> I would love that. I am twisted. I like that when it gets creepy what is the show about it's about middle names (laughs) Mm -hmm. what uh we've only got two more we're almost done guys hang on ben parman um the first shot would be some kind of a revelation towards the keen family that makes them almost split then tom's mommy comes along uh along the way to offer him a job where he is gone for a little while both parties will need the time off to hunt the ratings (laughs) or i mean the bad guys Looking forward to it. I like Famke Janssen, and we'll find we'll give the new show a shot. I like Famke a lot. I also like the ratings because it was the number one show. At the <laughs> yeah, but we don't want to talk about that. Let's 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 spin it so it sounds bad. <laughs> right. That's all we do anymore. Spin things so they sound bad. Uh, Brandon said Tom wants Liz to go back to the island so they can return Claire's baby and move on. Oh my God! Liz refuses to listen to Tom, and they part ways. Also, we find out Kirk is really the smoke monster, and Red is working for Jacob. It makes more sense than the actual show's ending. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks as always for the great responses. You have seven weeks, people. Seven weeks till January fifth to come up with this awesome statement. Are you ready? I'm ready. I was, I'm here. Yeah. Okay, say it then. <laughs> what did Red tell Kirk? What sweet nothing did Red whisper in Kirk's ear to make him not kill Red? Mm. Mm. I know. I know what Troy thinks it is. <laughs> I have three things that it could be. So see, you I'm, sure do. That's why oh, it's not 100 percent confirmed yet. But my God! But I'm holding you too. You're gonna before the show is over. 
we're going to know exactly where Troy stands. We're not stopping the podcast till he gives it. Okay, f- here's where I stand. I don't care what craziness he throws out there, but he's going to have an opinion. <clears throat> I will. I, yeah, have, you I, will. I have two. No, you got to have one. No, nope, I have two. <laughs> You have one. I have two. That's what an opinion is. I have one. It all. It can't. It, I, an opinion. I have an opinion, and then I have a very plausible second thing, and we have a clip to actually prove why one or the other is true. Oh, I can't wait to destroy your life. All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Get, yeah, I have a driver coming, so <laughs> we got to make sure we get done with this week's case profile quickly. Okay, guys. Uh, one. I want to address this because I was kind of disappointed, I think, by some people. Extremely. Yes, I was. Um, so there are a a faction of, of Blacklist fans that had held out hope that Red and Liz would become an item. A couple. Totally plausible. Yeah, th- there's, there's, a, there's a small contingent that really believes that, and that's great. We, we respect everybody's theory. I think we've always said that, and we try to, to do that. Well, the revelation about Red being, or I'm sorry, let me phrase it correctly, that Elizabeth being Red's daughter uh, kind of, you know, upset those fans. And, and I get that. They held to a certain theory. And you believe whatever you want to believe, not even contrasting that. What I am saying, though, I did see like a contingent of Blacklist fans kind of throw shade. Is that what the, the kids say? Bag throw on, some shade. Yeah, bag yeah. on them a little bit. Yeah, about bag on them for even believing that theory, and I just want to say that's not cool, guys. I mean, you know, you can believe whatever you believe, but in the end, it is ultimately just a TV show. So there's no reason to be negative to other people for believing whatever they believe. Okay, so that's all I want to say. I was really, I'm a huge believer in fans. I think fans drive a lot of a lot of what we do, what we're doing, Troy, with this and, and Westworld, and we love fan interaction. But it's not, it's not fun when you see people being attacked or attacking either way. So let's just be respectful of everybody's theories. Even if we don't agree with them, you know what? Just look the other way, move on, whatever. I think Troy's theory is ridiculous, but I try to I try to entertain it or just to blatantly make fun of it <laughs> in a respectful way. In a respectful I, I just, way. Let's, let's, let's just be fun. Let's not be angry. That's all. I feel your pain, Lizington. I feel your pain. <laughs> You should. You should. <laughs> All right, we're going to do this episode just a little bit different because really we're going to we're going to get through the basic story quick and the ancillary characters uh pretty quick. Um because we want to get to the ones you guys really want us to talk about and the statements you want us to talk about. That's really why people are listening this week. There are several there's probably <laughs> 10 minutes of show that that's all people are caring about this week. And I totally get it. We've been fans for a long time. I totally get it. So let's start with the crux of the story. Well, no, it's actually 10 minutes of stuff that we're going to get through because it's going to be an hour of show because we're going to argue about those statements forever. Possibly. (laughs) Possibly. It could happen. Uh, Odette orchestrated a pretty solid escape for Kirk. I thought that was a pretty cool uh, escape. Worked out well. At the same time, Reddington, Dembe, and Tom tracked down the only successful patient, Lucille Box, from Shaw's treatments to prove to Kirk that he can be cured and also to bargain. Red ends up trading his life for Liz's, tries to barter for his own, and we end with the revelation that Elizabeth is Red's daughter. And that's what he says. Under duress, I'm acknowledging that. Anyone else curious why <laughs> Red didn't tell Constantine she wasn't his from the get-go? That's uh. the first question I have, because the first thing I thought was, couldn't all this been avoided if you just gave Constantine a call and said, look, uh, why don't you do like a blood sample real quick? You'll see it's not your daughter. You can move on. Probably because he didn't know how Constantine would react in that moment. Mm, it's possible. That'd be my guess. I, the thing with getting I like that to information throw a little out, logic against TV logic every now and again. That's all. But but giving that info, Red's done such a great job for four seasons of holding on to the secret. Mm-hmm. Why would he give that information up unless he had a way? Because again, Red's a master manipulator. So when you think about giving up that information, there has to come with some kind of price tag on that. So I will give you this information, but by giving you this information, you either A, have to disappear to some banana plantation, or you have to die, or you have to work for me kind of thing. And so mm-hmm. we don't know exactly what's going to happen to Kirk. Uh, Booking Cam said that we are pretty much are done seeing him at this point. Great that he could come back, right? Because it doesn't look like he's dead, because all Red said was that he's gone. Right, so, he's gone. Interesting. So the question becomes... What, Choice question. What do you... I, I like how you pause and wait for it. I do. That's cute. <laughs> That's cute. 
Uh, I'm not Pavlov's dog. Now I'm not going to do it anymore. Yeah. You're grounded. Hmm. So I mean that that that's the the question I'm asking to the audience is what do you think happened to Kirk? What is he doing? Is he in Red's employ? Is he getting his treatments or But that's why because giving up that information comes with a price. Living with the shock that this man is his wife. Mm-hmm. That's what you want to say, isn't it? We're not there yet. We're not there yet. <laughs> He's so weird. Uh, anything else about this episode? I thought it was uh, interesting how Adet was going to kill Liz. That was kind of... I, I really thought she was actually going to let her go. Well, Liz ruined her life. I mean, this is... Apparently, Kirk is her lover, Odette's lover. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. therefore, ever since Masha showed up from the cabal on the TV screen, this is all he's been obsessed with. Spent his entire fortune trying to track her down. That would piss off the uh, the money grubbing lady. Yeah, it looked like it broke her. Poor thing. And then she. And then the, and then the water broke her. <laughs> yeah, and then the water literally broke her. Yeah, maybe. And that's that's pretty much it. The escape was great, and then we got to we got to re- run into our characters. I really think the overall plot was kind of wasn't really a factor this week. It was really about what was going on and what the was information being said. we got. Yeah, yep. the information we got. So without further ado, let's get into the characters. Let's start with music, Troy. Yes, as Odette leads an operation to break Kirk out of the hospital, a bomb goes off and we hear Voodoo in My Blood from Massive Attack and the Young Fathers. Later, as Red and Dembe have a heart-to-heart waiting for Kirk's car, we hear Elliot Smith's Between the Bars. And finally, we close out the fall with some Beck. Love Beck. Uh, Kirk gets uh, Sweet Nothings Whispered in his ear, and we see Kaplan now free hitching a ride so somewhere as said, say goodbye from Beck plays us out. Anything? What was the, what was the standout song for you? The Beck one? No, actually, I, I think I like Elliot Smith's Between the Bars. Watching that Dembe scene, it was, mm-hmm. I, I was tearing up a little bit. I like the voodoo in my blood because it was so weird. <laughs> and I didn't know how it applied. I'm like, what's going on? I really, I really dug it. I have to go back kinda... and look at all those lyrics uh, when we get some time because we've been talking about other things for the last two days. Oh man, the internet imploded. Wow. It was cool though because it got rid of all that election crap. It so sure did. Thank you so much. People were all talking blacklist. Thank you, thank you, blacklist for saving me because man, I'm starting to starting to really be disappointed in the world. <laughs> uh, Adette, she really is pretty pissed at Liz. We talked about that for being alive. But she does seem to escape. Now, I, I did see some people said, she died. Do you really think she died? I mean, splash, body didn't show up. That is so, a um, long-ass fall. Uh, it's a long-ass fall, but I don't think it's like 10 stories or anything. I mean, and she did hit water. It's the way she, like, you could tell it was either a dummy or she's a horrible diver because she landed, like, on her side or yeah. something. I, but uh, do you think she's alive or dead? Uh, TV trope, I would say she's alive. Yeah, I would say she's alive. So I assume, or am I right to assume we will see her again, you think? Possibly. I think she was a good villain. Be good to see her she as was. a villain again. She had a perfect ponytail. I respect that. Mm-hmm. I have weird things. I have weird tics. <laughs> I saw <laughs> not many people can pull off a perfect ponytail, and she has one. So I'm a fan. Maybe her and Russ are get together. Perfect hair meets perfect hair. Really? Now we, It's a total soap opera. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no. That we're going to go with? <laughs> hair meets <laughs> hair. Too perfect hair. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't catch that. Number one ninety seven. Number one ninety seven. The perfect hair. I'm so anxious to get the other stuff that I totally just let that blow over my head. <laughs> All right, Tom. Tom escapes numerous times. He has a bitching car chase. Kidnaps the lawyer with Dembe, and apparently, I just want the FBI is cool with him just shooting up the street now. <laughs> is that where we're at? Like Tom isn't even an agent, but he can just shoot up the street, and we're gonna just let it go. And anywhere Tom is driving a vehicle, there always seems to be an accident of some sort. It was a cool car chase, though. I really did. It was it. great. That, the car is awesome. The Mercedes Benz. That's a nice car. I liked how now he owes Wrestler. That'll come up. They're like, Watch. They're like best buds now. No, they are not <laughs> at all. Dembe. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Samar, Aram, and Cooper really didn't do much this week except intermittently assist tracking down Liz. And Cooper took a solid clocking of the eye. Yeah, he did. Man, he got hit hard. Uh, but I was glad. I was really, I'll be honest, because this is a fall finale, I was, w- when they attacked the hospital, I was actually legitimately worried for Cooper's fate. Which is actually kind of funny, because I was thinking about this when you said Samar got beat last week. Mm-hmm. Now Cooper's getting- Twice. Twice. She got her ass kicked twice, yeah. Now Cooper's getting beat up this week. I mean, it's almost like, the, even though we said, you know, we want more wrestler and we we need more stuff for Diego to do on the show, 
that maybe this is him just in the background writing scripts saying, it's time everybody else gets punched in the face because I got it all season one. <laughs> that is fair. That is fair. Uh, we didn't get much from those three. That's why we're going to kind of skedaddle past them. Dembe, he actually, for as we always said, Hisham, you know, he doesn't have much screen time, but he makes damn good use of what he does. Yeah. He has a couple of good moments in here. Uh, perhaps she can save you. I thought that was a really, that moment on the bench was a really sweet moment, I thought. We should clarify for the audience at this point, because there are some people there. What does she mean by the woman and she can save and blah, 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 blah. They're, Lucille. They're talking about Lucille, the patient zero. Yes. Yes. That's what I got anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, that's very clear. I think that that one's no questions about that oh, scene. I don't know, Troy. Everybody says that nothing's clear anymore. So I'm just going to go with, yeah, it seemed that way. Okay. Sure. <laughs> but I, I did really respect the um, the interplay between the two of them. I, I really enjoyed the, you know, when Dembe was trying to talk him out of going because he'll get killed. And then Red just gives him that look like, it's, yeah, but it's Elizabeth. You know, I, it's just... You can tell they are very close. They have uh, a great appreciation for each other. Brett asks him to forgive him for Kaplan, for, for everything. I mean, he cares what Dembe thinks, and I think he doesn't really care what many people think at all. So does Dembe forgive him? Yeah, I think he does. I, I think if he didn't forgive him, he wouldn't have been um, going against him, his wishes. for He has, wouldn't be pleading with him to not go. So, yeah, I totally think he does. Uh, and by the way, can we mention the football commercial that with him and awesome. Red sitting on the couch? <laughs> was that not fantastic? That Whoever was... thought of that, kudos. I wasn't. Kudos. I wasn't paying attention to which teams were on the TV, but if it would have been the Steelers for Hisham, that would have been awesome. <laughs> I didn't. I actually, I didn't see. I, I wasn't paying. I was just laughing too hard. Maybe this is their making up the promotional department making up to you, Troy, for ruining Kaplan early in the season. That could be. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm going to go. That's what I'm going to go with. Speaking of Kaplan, we finally got a resolution to the Jim Bob Cooter story where, <laughs> sorry, I just threw in a football <laughs> hillbilly reference for no reason. Uh, seems like her loyalty lies still with Red. Um, I'll be honest, I'm a little bummed with that. I really wanted her to be a foe. Now, you said that she could be a foe, but it really felt like she understood where Red was coming from. It did. She was explaining the whole story about the, the man who shot me. It's like, if he does this then that's what's going to happen. You, you, you know, you don't cross this person. So mm -hmm. uh, she understands red. And so I think by understanding red, she understands why it was necessary. I think red's going to be surprised when she shows up alive. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, she did say that she, he can't, he, he here's what she said. He lost his way. Uh, he placed a lovely woman and her baby girl in danger. He loves them deeply. His presence in their lives presents the threat, not just to them, but to himself. And if he even suspects I survive, there's no place I'd be safe. Uh, and also, it's a shame he had no crackers. <laughs> nice touch. I love that one. But to me, that says that she doesn't want revenge. Like, she understood where he was coming from. So I don't see her as becoming a villain, which I personally find disappointing because I thought she'd make a great villain. But whatever. You think it does? You think it means that she could go up against Red? I don't think it could go up against Red, but depends on how Red responds if Red finds out she's alive. Mm. So it could be could become villains because Red still wants to finish the job. Or does Red say, oh, man, you suffered enough. I can't believe you survived that shot. And Didn't you get in. that vibe? Didn't you get that vibe from when he asked Dembe to forgive him? It seems like he already regrets it. Yeah, but it could be more just like he's looking to cleanse his soul. But he would still go through with it because he has a code and he has to follow through with the code. Hmm. Like he didn't, well, he didn't want to do it. But if he doesn't do it, then he goes soft, and then people would be able to take advantage of him. Okay, I, I, that makes sense, I suppose. Uh, I do want to say thank you for finally resolving this storyline. I was glad to see it come to an end. Yes, <laughs> it's just one. I like all the actors involved, but it was kind of dragging for me. So I'm, I'm glad that it's finally resolved. We can move forward and see where Kaplan goes next on her journey. Any theories on where she's going to go? We might not even see her for a while, to be quite honest. And I think this is the nice thing about this episode is that it ends up leaving a lot of you know her and Kirk in, in a place where either they can never be on the show again or they could just show up at random. And, and, we'd, be, and we'd be like, yeah, she's back. you know, Or yeah, he's back. Yeah, I think I think having those having those options as a as a storyteller, a writer, 
I think are really, really fun to play with because it gives you so many different ways you can go. Sure. Okay, moving on to wrestler. Like I said, we're we're gonna get to the big three here pretty quick. Uh wrestler, Tom Ozen won. Fair enough. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh number one. Am I the only one who was surprised that Goody Two Shoes wrestler tortured a suspect? Uh, no, <laughs> not at You're all. Not? Why not? Because, well, I'm I'm not surprised that it got to this point, right? He was Goody Two Shoes, and then he started, you know, with the whole taking the chair in season three, and now he's at this point. Um, just like we said, I think nobody's actually good on the show anymore. There just mm-hmm. depends on how far they're willing to bend. So in this situation, because they Liz was captured. Like this is the whole, you know, are we back to the the Keenler concept of maybe he's a little bit more involved trying to save Liz, and that's why he loses his temper. I see it more as a brother sister thing. Like he, he just, it's his partner, even though it's not really his partner anymore. It's his partner. Hasn't been his partner for a long time. He still sees her as a partner or a sister or something like that. A close person that's worth uh, doing these things for. I was surprised by it though. I thought he jumped to torture really quick. Like, the guy didn't answer one question. He's just like, well, all right, time to do surgery. What I loved about that scene, though, and maybe this is just me in my sick, twisted way I'm looking at stuff. Most likely. And because yep. I watched Stranger Things again recently. Um, oh, show so good. Let's talk about that some more. <laughs> uh, when he's choking him, or whatever, his sleeper hold, or whatever it was, and then it went to Samar, and Samar did, like, a little, like, head head twist, a head, a head nod to the right. Mm-hmm. I, I thought she was signaling, like, snap his neck. <laughs> was the first no. thing that came in my head, came in my mind. I, I was like, "Yeah, snap his neck." Versus, I think she was kind of taking him back real quick and lost her composure very, very, very uh, discreetly, but lost her composure just for a second. And be like, "Oh, that's usually my job." <laughs> Whoa, didn't see that coming, pretty boy. Because if you're saying like, you know, okay, that's enough, you'd like do like the hand across the throat thing, like not you know, cut it out. But when mm-hmm. when she twisted her head, I was like, "Oh, she said, snap his neck." They're, they're gonna they're gonna be bash brothers together or whatever and uh throughout the show he does a, he does a foot chase uh he saves liz tortures a guy hair doesn't move just saying never hair doesn't move god bless him he is the most fantastic quaff of hair all right well that does uh rest we didn't get a whole lot i i hope that goes somewhere i, I like i said I, I really would like Russell to to get some more screen time and i'm sure he will especially with tom departing i think that'll that'll help with that all right, Liz. She uh, she really fights to save Red. Um, she's showing her love for Red again. Were you surprised by that at all? Well, again, this is Liz wanting answers. So when she finds out that Kirk isn't the one to give him the answer, give her the answers. Mm-hmm. Yep. That Red is now my only next option. So I'm going to do everything to be in Red's good graces so I can get the answers that I want. So no, I don't find this to be a surprise at all. Neither did I. And. Uh, we see his love for her in a different light, which we'll talk about shortly. But outside of that, all Liz really was a was a non factor. I mean, the, the episode was kind of about getting Liz out and and training for her and everything else. But the, Liz, the character who has been very prominent most of the season, was not really a factor this episode. Agree? Would you agree? Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure. I don't want to move on. If if you want, is there anything more about Liz's character you want to talk about? Well. As- even if Kirk is not the father, per the DNA tests, not if it's. Been, I mean, well, how many times it's right? been solidified? Yeah, there's, like, yeah. there's like four people that said, "I checked the test. I checked the test. Yeah, she's not your daughter." But at the same time, she he was involved with Katarina, so you mm-hmm. think that she would be a little bit more interested to in getting some information out of him. So either arrest him, keep him locked up somewhere. Once he gets the CRISPR transfusion thing going. He still has answers that she could get. Mm-hmm. But That's exactly what I thought. I was kind of, man, so, but it's TV and sometimes TV does that. But it's always that thing where I'm like, just ask the question. <laughs> Tackle him and ask it. Ask him. All right. So tell me everything you know about what happened to me as a kid. You want to really get back at Reddington, Kirk? Just give me all the answers and I'll play with his mind after you're dead. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, she was typical Liz tried to save the people in the hospital. She, but she didn't want red to turn himself in either. I think she genuinely has a, a love for, for red. Maybe she doesn't know why, but she has a genuine love for him or respect or caring for him. Yes. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, that's right. That's the quickest we've ever gotten 
to the two main characters in the history of this podcast. I swear to God. All right. Thank Hang on. I got right. to buckle up now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. Uh, all right. So do you want to play any clips first, or do you want to just start with Kirk? I think we'll just – yeah, this? let's start with Kirk. I think we'll save everything for Red. Okay. So, uh, Kirk, some of the, the – Interesting things that he said. Love did it, if you can believe it, when he's talking to Liz. He says he cradled Liz in his arms. So, And there's also indication that he basically raised her on and off for four years. How does that contrast with uh, Kaplan saying that she was placed in her arms to care for as a baby? That one really confused me. Doesn't confuse me at all. How's that? Please explain, boss. <laughs> When they when they said that he, she was in and out of your care, in and out of your house for four years, and then Reddington also said that you know, when Kaplan said, you placed the baby in my arms, we know at that moment that, A, the baby was at least somehow connected to Reddington and Kaplan. The fesh, you have to define what baby spans, right? Does baby go to eight months, 12 months, 18 months? When When is it truly a toddler at that point? Because it, I think <clears throat> by like two, two is usually where people stop seeing things. I know four isn't a baby. True, true. <laughs> four so, is walking around and saying names and doing letters and stuff. So in and out of his life over that four-year period could mean that Kirk still was able to hold Liz as a baby. Like you said here, you know, cradle Liz in his arms. You could also cradle the toddler in your arms. So maybe the, the, the in and out of your life for the four years could be very sporadically in the beginning when it was clearly uh, Reddington and Kaplan that had the baby, and then he was more in- influential towards the th- you know third year fourth year concept, because it all goes back to the the fire and the dream sequence from Luther Braxton. Like how much of that is truth, and how much of that can we believe to really figure out was the man Reddington, was the female um, uh, Katarina, who was actually the one that got shot and fell down, all of that stuff. Um, the only other option I could see would be that, you know, because when Red has this conversation, he says, Elizabeth is my daughter, not Masha. I don't know. I mean, I'm just probably just, just reaching for straws, but maybe there were two kids and one is right in tens and no, that doesn't make any sense. And we postulated that theory. When, yeah, we did, when, but we, I, I, I know, there are like two girls in the. In the vision, in the cl- right? in the closet, yeah, uh, you know who's Masha? You're Masha, or we think we we postulated that there was two people in that closet, right? Yeah, nothing's ever confirmed, but that's the only thing I could see is that he did raise one, and he like he could either have told Kirk that Masha is alive or Katarina is alive in my mind, and <clears throat> that could be something um, possibly, possibly. Like maybe he's, maybe Elizabeth is reds, but Masha is out there somewhere. Not actually, it's not actually Liz, but then again, why would he let people believe that she was? So that, that really doesn't make any sense, I suppose, but or it's an idea that's bouncing around in my head. Everything's bouncing around in my head at this point. Or if you go with my theory, the mother theory, Explain it because there are people that haven't heard it before. Okay. And I, just real quick, well, though, because we're going to get to red. We're well, going to actually hold it because we're going to get to red. We're going to exp- we'll that. explain the mother theory as we go along because it all depends on the how you interpret the words that are said. But mm-hmm. my theory is is that red is Katarina somehow. Katarina, when she died and red went missing for four years, that four years is when he was getting converted from Katarina to red because Reddington did die in the fire when Liz shot Reddington at that moment. The original Reddington. Got so, it. All right. so in, in this case, then you could say that Katarina could have put Liz into Kaplan's arms as a baby, and Katarina would have been with Kirk. So that is technically plausible. Yeah, that's that's really a connection that confuses me. And it could also, I mean, really, it could be very simple that Red placed Kaplan in charge of her. Or just keeping an eye on her as she was in um, that house. So up until that moment, Kaplan was just watching from afar. It could easily just mean that. It, it could mean that. Could mean that. Mm-hmm. It could. Uh, so, you know, that that's one of the mysteries that's, that's still out there. Kirk also says, I remember being an honest businessman and a happy marriage until you came along. Seduced my wife. Katerina broke it off. Came home one night and you were gone. My wife and my girl, who wasn't my girl gone 
And then he talks about how he's an expert in pain management, blah, 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 blah. So what do you think about this? I mean, he basically paints the story that uh, he was an honest businessman, wasn't, you know, he was just powerful, which is why it seems that he was a target. Happy marriage. Red came along, seduced the wife. Katarina broke it off, took the kid, left. What do you think about that? I think it's Kirk's opinion on how it all went down. We know from the journal that Katarina was a KGB agent, right? She was there to seduce the American, seduce, and as Red postulates in the conversation, right? Maybe she, he was a target as well. Mm-hmm. And it never really was a loving family from the beginning. So I love that Kirk is standing by his convictions on what it all is. And that's exactly how uh, a character in Alias did the same thing until it wasn't proved to be otherwise. And so when you compare that concept, it's just, it is what it is. I'm 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 sorry, Kirk, but you were a ploy, <laughs> potentially, just like I was, is what Red is saying. So no, I don't, I, I don't think I don't think I don't think Red sought out to steal Katarina from Kirk. I don't either. I don't either. Uh, DNA test faked by Katarina is what Red says. Well, um, it's a, it said that the DNA. The DNA test is what Katarina wanted you to see. Didn't say that right. she was the one that faked it. We got to be very careful in our words now. But Red said that the DNA test is what Katarina wanted you to see. That sounds like Katarina faked it. I mean, I don't know how other. What other way can you take that? Uh, she had people to do it for her. That's still Katarina faking it. I mean, it's still, <laughs> it boils down to the same thing. It's the same difference. Splitting hairs is what I'm calling this one, Joy. Well, I'm just saying we're, we, we, the answers are on screen, is what Boken Camp and Eisendrath and everybody has said. So we have to stay mm-hmm. with what's been said and not interpret it in our own way and twist the words. Just like the whole, he's her father. No, he's not. <laughs> Red uh, is, well. Elizabeth is Red's daughter. It's a very important distinction. <sighs> okay. So she was a KGB agent, uh, trained to seduce diplomats and businessmen, powerful, influential people. Red and Kirk were both targets. They do both acknowledge they were both targets. Yes. Finally, something you agree with. Cool. Uh, and, and then Kirk says, which I think is probably hysterical in, in some aspects. If the price of my life is sharing the earth with you, I'm going to have to turn you down. I was like, damn. He'd rather, yeah, he'd rather kill him than have to than save his own life. Yep. I think that's phenomenal. That's dedication. That's 100%. Oh boy! Vitriol yes. hate for Reddington. I do you understand it. I understand it. I understand Where's it. Coming from if you, he truly took my kid and you destroyed yeah. my family and yeah, he truly believed that that was his perfect peaceful life. And then this guy went and messed it all up. I would hate him too. I guess in theory, hang on, this is coming. Maybe there was another child that's important to someone. That Katarina said was their daughter after she had her daughter while Kaplan was watching Red's daughter until everything came to a head four years in and both girls would have been in the house and everything went to hell and maybe Red still has to protect the real Masha, which is why he let Liz be seen as masha so he could uh i'm just thinking out a lot i was gonna say you I'll went full heinrich there because i have no idea what the hell you're talking about uh, well okay <laughs> go with me here i did go full heinrich full peterson eh, that's not as catchy full heinrich works okay so the only thing i could think of is that katarina was pregnant with red's baby had the baby there's another child that for some reason they had to Protect someone else's child, someone very, very important, head of the cabal. I don't know. Or maybe they were twins. I guess you could do it with the twin thing, but I'd rather go with somebody else's kid. So that's the child that was in their house while Red gave his actual, him and Katarina's child to Kaplan to keep an eye on. And then uh, everything went to hell. So both girls would be in the house. They came to a head or whatever. And then um, he had to hide Masha, the real Masha forever for reasons undisclosed at this point while elizabeth is actually his daughter he had to let the world believe when that came out that she was masha because he couldn't risk revealing who the real masha was because that would be a betrayal for something else i don't i don't know what that would be but and i think that works so he could so that's he could have told 
he could have told him and would would reasonably explain his shock that Masha is your daughter. She is still alive. She's out there. Which, something like that. Which is one. We'll call that number one. It's one of the three possible things that Kirk could have said or that Red mm-hmm. would have said to Kirk that would have made Kirk stop. No, no, no. Your yeah. your daughter, Masha, is still alive and out there somewhere. Right. That would have worked. And that and that would tie into the concepts of when we heard uh, Red say this season, it's not about me being in your life. It's about who you are. Because who you are is important, which mm-hmm. is where we got. And to take that to maybe there were two girls in the closet. You get the whole twin thing. We know that with uh, Diane Fowler, that something happened to Red's family. And we always thought that maybe his wife and daughter were killed in that fire. So, yeah, potentially there would be two children. Yeah, just an idea. Because if you think about it, his wife and daughter, um, his his daughter is actually was actually the other girl or something. I don't know. I, I just think there's something there's something there and I'm not it's not clicking just yet and it'll probably click ten minutes after this show's over. But where it falls at, apart though is in the dream sequence when the woman shows up to talk to the man, it's like Masha, Masha, where's Masha? Her name is Elizabeth. So the so the Elizabeth over Masha correction is saying that it's the same person. However, no. we're getting that. No, we're- if you if you look at my theory, what I'm just postulating, I know I've got that word in my head. Damn it, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is that no, her name her name is Elizabeth could be correcting that person and saying no, that child is actually Elizabeth, ah, not Masha. I like See what it. I'm See I what like, I'm saying? I like. I totally like that. Yep. You know, I I don't know how that connects, but that's that's where I'm kind of throwing a, I'm throwing a spitball out there and just saying that's that could go that way. It's a very yeah, it's a very good twist. I like There's it. There's two kids. There are two kids. That- and Elizabeth is Red's daughter, but is not Masha. And it's also, I guess, possible that Liz mm, No, yeah, Elizabeth is his daughter. That is who his daughter is, but Masha is out there somewhere and he has to protect Masha too. And Masha was Kirk's daughter. Not necessarily Kirk's daughter, but someone of importance, someone he had to protect for some reason we don't know about. Well, he would have to be Kirk's daughter if we're going to say that option one of what he said. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Kirk, that's Kirk true. would have to be like, holy crap, my kid's alive? If that's, yeah, if that would be the theory. Otherwise, Katarina is alive is the obvious one. Correct. Um, or I'm Katarina. I don't want to steal your thunder just yet. Let's get there before I steal that. Okay, so that's, that's Kirk. Let's just get into red now. I think we're at red. Because everything to do with this episode that everybody wants to talk about is basically about Red Reddington. Mm-hmm. Uh, the goon spiel, probably my favorite line of the whole episode. That uh, that delivery where he's like, goons, goons, come on. <laughs> I mean, that was just <laughs> – I just love that delivery. Uh, I, I do think this rivals Cape May in terms of performance-wise. When he's being tortured, I thought Spader just knocked it out, out of, of the park. park. Yeah. Uh, and and you know sometimes when people are getting tortured it's just kind of ridiculous but yeah i felt i felt for him and especially that moment between him and kirk where he's saying tell me about her tell me about her which i know you're going to go to here in a minute but that was a, there's a very heartfelt moment there's a lot of great acting in this scene i thought kirk was really well to did really well too um the moment with dembe forgive me for for kate for everything i man man tear up a little bit that was hard. Get back in there, hard. dear. That was hard. And I do believe we have a clip to start this off. Yes, this is the clip where Red is being tortured and being asked, you know, are you her father? Are you her father? And then the conversation changes. So take a listen to the big reveal one more time. Maybe she's a miracle. Maybe she's not a miracle. By the way, you're going to have to answer my question. No. You're not her father? No, I'm not going to answer your question. It doesn't matter. She lives at her, at her house as her daughter. On and off for four years. Sometimes you were there, sometimes you weren't. What difference does it make? Are you her father? Samuel Hohen raised her up with that. Are you her father? It doesn't matter. I can't. If I inject him again, I'm going to 
ask you one more time. Is Masha your daughter? crazy <laughs> boom 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 oh uh, let me recap real quick she lived at your house as your daughter for on and off for four years sometimes you were there sometimes you weren't didn't red disappear for a period of time hmm, interesting sam raised her after that is masha your daughter what do you want me to say yes is that what you want me to say i'm doing i'm doing my perfect spader if you can tell yes elizabeth is my daughter not masha elizabeth not are you the father Elizabeth is my daughter. That's exactly what he said. Yes. So for whatever reason, I think the not Masha, but Elizabeth is important. And I kind of said why. I'm still kind of putting together the pieces. I'm sure everybody's got their own theory. But I do think that is important that he said Elizabeth and not Masha. So what do you want to say to that, Troy? I want to say that the whole time it's, are you her father? Are you her father? Are you her father? I can't eject him again. If I do, I'm going to ask you one last time. Is Masha your daughter? The conversation changes at that moment from father to specifically saying, are you the daughter? Now, most people will look at the world as black and white and other colors and everything else, but female, male, and not think outside the box. I'm not saying that my theory is 100% true, but the wording of this scene... And the whole concept of she lived at your house for four years. Sometimes you were there. Sometimes you weren't. Doesn't say that Reddington lived there. Says that Elizabeth was, Masha was there. Elizabeth was there. So in that case, there's a very good possibility that Red is Katerina based on the, all of the language in this scene. And please explain to the people that, haven't already turned this episode off. Um, <laughs> how you can how you can justify that Katarina had a section? And by the way, he's been saying this for the longest time. He's probably the first person I ever heard say it. Episode and one, de- definitely publicized it. So got a lot of traction thanks to Troy. Nice job, Woo-hoo. jackass. Uh, <laughs> and it also turned a lot of people off because you know I can't believe that that would be the da da da. Hey, it's a cool twist if it if it ends up being true. But please tell people how you can justify. That dress. And I'm going to tell you, in two seconds, I can strip your whole theory to dirt. But I want to give you a shot. So please tell people how you can justify that. I'm going to justify it uh, from the first episode of the series when Red sits there across from Liz for the very first time and says these words, everything about me is a lie. That's where, that's where the theory started. Literally in that statement, everything about me is a lie, depending on how you want to interpret that. The second thing jumps to the alchemist episode in season one, where the alchemist could literally change an entire person into a completely different person all the way down to their DNA level. And because of that surgery and that change, he had to see the plastic surgeon in Miami that he was going back to. Now, you could say the plastic surgeon in Miami was about the burns from the fire and he survived the fire and all of that jazz, which I totally understand and agree with that that is a possibility so that's why i'm not saying the mother theory is 100 percent confirmed but you could use those things to say that the mother theory is plausible because we did have the alchemist without the alchemist the theory falls apart but because the alchemist is there the theory could hold and then we had the gin in season three where for that entire 40 of 44 minutes we all thought that was a woman until he's until he said yeah, I can't believe that you would have done that to your son. And we all went, what? So alchemist, gin, everything about me is a lie. Red disappears for four years. Why would you need to disappear for four years? Because Red died in the fire. Liz shot her father, Reddington, dead in the fire. Liz, or uh, Katerina with her grief, tried to figure out a way to do it. And in order to hide herself from Kirk and other people, assumed Red's identity. And the blacklist is about... Katarina covering up her tracks. Okay. Your turn. 
Um, well, A, I will say that uh, just to take that theory to dirt, Kirk recognizes, seemingly recognizes right on site. And he would because technically before – the- That's some astounding plastic surgery. If you can make Katarina look like a person that actually existed, have the same and that's exa- manners and, and that's voice. exactly what the alchemist did. Exactly what the alchemist did. Cooper as well knew Red well. They act as old friends. They're very comfortable. They share memories, which Katarina, I guess you could go with. Well, Red told her. Da 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 da. Yep. Um, but I'm sorry, it just it doesn't hold water. They both recognize him on site. He was married to Naomi. And I know that people say, well, they had a daughter. I still believe Jennifer was actually Naomi's daughter. Correct. He just, he's, because I believe, this is what I believe, okay? That Red sees who is a father as who raises that child, who was around for that child. I think he was around for Jennifer, so he saw her as his daughter. That's, that's what that meant. It doesn't mean that that is actually his flesh and blood. It meant that he saw her as his child. Naomi, and I know you're going to say, well, she said that you look different or you've changed. And Naomi said, yeah, Reddington is not the man you think he is. That's another one. That's another line that you can use to support the theory. Or you could just say that means that he's a better man than you think. You know, I mean, sure, sure. There's a lot of things that I think we look way too deeply at and, uh, and overthink to some degree. And sometimes things just are what they are. I don't see that holding any water because I think it, it's, it would it would be so outlandish to even believe that all these people would believe him to be Red Reddington, let alone or believe her to be Red Reddington in, in your scenario, that it just doesn't work for me. It just doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't hold water in my eyes. Kirk knows who Red is. Red feels familiar with Kirk. And I agree. There are little hints and nods to your theory. Like when he says – when when Kirk's talking about his moment, which you're, I know you're going to play here in a second, but when he's talking about the moment that he shared with Katarina, and he sees something that Red was never there, and he says, and I just want, you know, and she was just, and he said, dancing, which, yes, there, you could look at that if you are so inclined. You could look at that as only Katarina would know that, which is why Katarina said that as Red Reddington. Well, why don't we go ahead and play that first so that we can have everybody okay. hear it. So okay. here it comes. This is the uh, conversation about Katarina that Kirk and Red share before the sweet nothings were whispered no, in his hey, ear. Hey, 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 this is the conversation between Kirk and Red. Did you say Katarina? <laughs> Did you slip that in there? This is the conversation between Kirk and Red. Okay, here we go. After all these years, I've forgotten what she was really like. You remember what she did? not who she was. Remind me. When we, when we first met, there was this house near where she lived. A case study house built by this famous mid-century architect. Over dinner one night, she said she wanted to look at it. I thought she meant look from the street. When we got there, she jumped the fence. The lights were on. People lived there. She didn't care. I stood there, frozen, angry, nervous. And I felt this rush of acceleration. I climbed up. Looked into the yard. She was just dancing, unafraid, daring, being. I never seen anything like it. She had the joy for living. She was more alive than anyone I knew. When I heard she killed herself, I didn't believe it. I still don't. You're wrong. I didn't see what she wanted me to see of her. I saw her. 
despite what happened. I know she loves me. You don't have to do this. Raymond, there's nothing in this world you can tell me to change my mind. Huh? Yeah, there is. <laughs> three things. Yeah, there is. What's that? Three things that he could say. There are three things. And uh, I would say that those three things would be Mosh is still alive. Uh, Katarina is alive. Or I'm Katarina. Correct. Now, the one thing I think some people um, think, because I'm, I'm constantly railing against Troy for his what I always call stupid theory. And I don't consider any theory stupid. I just, I know Troy, so it's okay. He doesn't get, well, I don't really care if you get mad at me, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's a little bit ludicrous, but I'm not going to lie. Part of me wants it to work because I think that would be bold in, in an era where I don't think, especially a semi procedural, it's not really a procedural, but there's a lot of procedural elements to the blacklist. And I know, and I, it's one of those twists that I think would make half the audience go, what the, and then throw things and half the twist that the other part of the audience would be, wow, that is one of the boldest things I've seen on TV. Especially when it's on broadcast TV. I'm bro- yeah, especially on broadcast TV. So don't get me wrong, even though I, I rail really against it and I don't see it because of certain elements that I think are really hard to get past. I like the idea and the concept of it because I've never seen that on television. And I think that would be brilliant. I know some people are like, well, that's just blah, 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 blah. I get what you're saying. But if you really think about how how that could work, that because I think it could work in a world where, you know, this show is kind of ridiculous in a lot of ways. But it could work. The Alchemist does make it possible to a degree to, to work. And that would also explain several things. It would explain, you know, people, some people, I've had people say, well, you can't justify that because of the case. And here I am trying to feed your theory again. I'm sorry, but. Feed um, away. Say, feed away. The Camp May episode, you can't because of Camp May, he's having memories. I'm like, no, the Camp May can be him remembering himself as Katarina. It could, I get what you're saying. There, there are no concrete um, blocks saying this is the way it goes. I get that. And now if, if people refer to him as her grandfather, it's technically true because he had a sex change. So now, you know, he's a man and da, 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 da. On the same token, that is an extreme change when she could easily just change into a different woman or something along those lines. So, But she's a KGB operative who maybe wanted to get away from the KGB. Maybe the KGB were coming to track her down because she fled with Reddington because she didn't want to be a KGB agent anymore because of her family. And because of that, the KGB came and tracked her down at Kate May, and that's why she had to change who she was fundamentally to hide from the KGB. Pretty sure she didn't have to change into a dude, but whatever. Never <laughs> never find her then. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. She could be a completely different woman and still they'd never find her, but or most likely never find her. But I, I get what you're saying. I'm not saying that there isn't something there. I just have nothing to, to where I believe it because of the Cooper evidence, because of the Kirk evidence, because of the being married to Naomi and having a daughter evidence. There's just too many things going against it for it to be plausible. I think it's an entertaining theory. It's a cool idea, but it's not plausible. And to me, plausible is where I where I kind of stick my, my fork in the sand. I don't see it as a plausible solution to the situation. It is much more plausible to me that there is a Masha and a, and a and Elizabeth, that they are two different children. It is plausible to me that there's a lot more going on behind the scenes than we understand yet, but none of that has to do with a sex change. It's just, it's one of those things where I think you had a lot of fun with the theory, and I think you've taken it to greater heights than it probably ever would have, but I don't see it as plausible. And if you look at it from the sense of trying to hide herself from the KGB, why Why not hide as the someone that's the closest to who they were, because then she can commit the suicide and be completely gone. And the KGB is like, well, you were with her. Like, yeah, she killed herself. The KGB is like, all right. And then, and then literally Scott completely clean and free, and she can continue raising her daughter 
in the safety of Sam Mahone and watching over from afar while this whole process takes place. Possible. It's possible. It, I, I, it's barely possible. And the, and, and the reason why... <laughs> Put it that way. In, in this state, barely. Barely. But in the statement that he's saying here, she, they're reminiscing about Katarina. So two things come to mind here for me. One, Katarina is so far removed from who she was... That she's forgotten that. So that's why Red is saying, you know, remind me. Absolutely. Of- I trust me when I watched it and I've watched it like eight times. All I keep hearing is Troy's stupid voice in my head. And a lot going, of people oh, were that way. I already know what he's going to say. I already know what he's going to say. I already know what he's going to say. And you said it. Yes. He is trying <laughs> to can, remember who you the, can who, take it who, multiple ways. Red's trying to remember the person that he was. And the reason why. Kirk stops like dead cold in his tracks is because right before that said, when I heard that she killed herself, I didn't believe it. I still don't. I still don't. And so the only thing that would literally go, holy crap, she's not dead because she's you. That's kind of where I was at that moment. Yeah, I got that. But that's not the only thing. Because they're not talking about the kid. They're not talking about Masha, Elizabeth. They're talking about Katarina in that moment. So to me, that reduces the three options to two options. You mm-hmm. are Katarina or Katarina is alive. And you do you. Uh, OK, here's where I'm going to hold Troy to it. What do you honestly believe? And don't give me the well, I believe two things. I'm like, if you got held down and were tortured by a wrestler and said here at this moment right now, here's what I actually think is going on. Here's who I think Red is. What would you say? No, no plan. Well, multiple. I, I'm all over the place. I get it. You're keeping an open mind, and your theories are all optional. I get it. Nine, what do you actually believe right now? Ninety nine point nine five percent. I believe that Red is Katarina. You actually believe it? Believe it. There's so much evidence in the show. The, there's so, only there's only one one item in the entire series that could debunk the theory, and I actually is, and I actually have that clip. Oh, oh, well. I didn't see this coming. Kids, let's settle in. Let's hear it. This is the clip that started the whole thing from the beginning. But this could debunk it. This could debunk the mother theory because it could prove the father theory. And it's all in the first episode of the show. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. And I'm supposed to believe you. (laughs) Of course not. I'm a criminal. A criminal's notorious liars. Everything about me is a lie. Two statements. But you can't believe me. I'm a criminal. Criminals are notorious liars. Separate that mm-hmm. from everything about me is a lie. If you take the first statement from the get-go, when you set up a genre television show, granted we say it's a procedural, but it's a genre television show, mm-hmm. you set up rules from the beginning. Absolutely. That statement can be taken to say Red has always lied to Liz because he said from the beginning, you can't trust me. So everything Red has said the whole time is a complete fabrication and a lie, which means that when Red says, are you, when she says, are you my father? And he says, no, he is bold faced lying to her in that moment, which makes him the father when he says, yes, Elizabeth is my daughter. So that would make the father theory 100% true, depending on how you interpret that very first meeting at the beginning of the show. They've also set up rules along the way that Red considers the person who raises a child the father. True, 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 true. So it's they so it's pull- not. And some people have said, well, that that would be lying to me. That, that wouldn't. I wouldn't see it as a lie. I get it. I, as a dad, I get it. But I completely understand that argument. But hold that thought because I got that clip as well. Oh my God! How many clips did you bring for this thing? <laughs> Got, you have to you have to flush it out, right? Give everybody the evidence. That's why I said lawyer up. So I just want to say it's selected evidence, but okay, go ahead. It's very specific it, it, evidence, so that supports no, these concepts. No, because you're completely ignoring the fact that Kirk recognizes them. They have a conversation about we a solved history. That. We solved that. That's the alchemist. The alchemist can solve that problem and put that to bed. That is absurd, though. That they, they would have that much. The alchemist could change somebody to make them look and act and sound and everything else exactly like a a person that originally lived. They would have the memories. I mean, she would have to, Katerina, would have had to get every information of every encounter that Red had had with Cooper. She kept a a diary. She did keep a diary and she said how much she loved Red. 
She did in the diary. She so did. the diary proves that there are two people as well. I mean, it just and if I and if I loved if I loved Red that much, and Red, I would and, know and, that much about him. Blah 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 blah. blah. If I love you're saying, if I love Red that much, Anne and Kate May, like I was so distraught when that man died, that I went and killed myself. I mean, all of that ties up to be completely plausible that you sought out the alchemist and had the alchemist make the change to get away. Hey, I'm living. I'm I'm allowing that it's it's plausible. In fact. Part of me really wants it to happen. It would just, they would have, there's a lot of pieces they have to resolve for me to buy it. How's that? Uh, at one, for, yeah, for me to get on it, I would have to see some things that really explain a way. That whole, I mean, scene was the last video of the week before where Red and Cooper are just sitting back having recollection of the past. That's pretty detailed encounters to actually serve as a memory. And, and it's a real stretch for me. Like a real stretch. I don't care who the alchemist is. This is a real stretch. Okay, so now take that, but go back to the statement, right? This is the fundamental rule of the show. Red does not lie to Liz. They've tweeted mm-hmm. about it. It's been on the DVD uh, in season one. It continued. It was brought up by Sarone on Twitter before the show even started. Remember, Red doesn't lie to Liz. Even with what Red says to Liz this evening, Red doesn't lie, right? Mm-hmm. So if that is a rule, then you can remove part one of this clip, right? Everything about you know the... Uh, Criminals, criminals are notorious liars. If you take that away, then from that moment, if you're saying Red never lies to Liz, then the everything about me is a lie, boom, is truth, and that be, supports the mother theory from the get-go. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. But it also so it's also, in my mind, not a lie when he says, no, I'm not your father, because he doesn't consider himself to be. So... Let's play this clip here from Liz at the end of the he show. He considers himself to be a biological donor. That's what he considers himself. Potentially. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. So let's just go ahead and listen to Liz and Red at the end of the show. Now, the selected clip. Now, this is this is dependent on how you interpret the rule, Red never lies to Liz. If you say that that is a hard and fast rule, then you have to understand how you want to interpret what Red says here. If criminals are notorious liars and I've lied from the beginning and I've never, ever told you the truth then he's hiding the fact that he is the biological father in the statement. Oh, we get it. Play the clip. Kirk. Gone. Dead? Gone. I don't, I don't understand. How did you... It's over. May I? Mm. Here. Come here. Yes. <sighs> You know, I really believed he was my father. You had every reason to. Except for one. You. You told me my father died when I was a little girl. I just... I guess I didn't want to believe it. I really wanted my dad here to see her grow up. He would have wanted that too. Okay. I know where you're going with this one, but go ahead. So she says that because of you, right? You told me that my father died when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. If you believe Red never lies to Liz, because her own said it on Twitter, that when Red talks to Liz tonight, that theory still holds true, then that means her father is dead as a little girl. Wait, wait, wait. You can't pick and choose at what people say on Twitter as fact, because I'm, otherwise, I'm not. Sony, because um, the writers said, you know, grandfather, da, 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 which I guess you could you explain, you could, that, you explain too, that too. So I'm, I'm typically, I don't use Twitter as a rule. So that's why I went back to the evidence of what's in the show, which is what Bokenkamp told EW in the article. What's on screen answers the questions. So you have to go back to that first statement again. If you believe that he's lying the whole time, then he lied to Liz about her father dying when she was a little girl. Or if you believe Red never lies to Liz, then the father is dead when she's less than four years old. So keep that in mind. Then Mm -hmm. the, the last statement, the last statement Red makes, this is where it gets really confusing, people. Because the last statement he says is that yeah, she says, I wish my father would have been here to see this. And then he says he would have loved that too. Right? 
Mm-hmm. So that statement there is past tense, meaning the father is dead. Now, let me play. Or, let, let, or, wait, hold it, hold it. Let me play. Okay. Let me play this clip from General Ludd, season one, Sam Mahone in the hospital with Reddington. I need to tell Lizzie. No. I know what we agreed. But before I go, I have to tell her. I can't let you do that. She deserves the truth. You will always be her father, Sam. I can only hope to... love her and protect her as you have. Okay. So now you have the you'll always be her father, Sam. So this is where Aaron's concept comes into play, right? Where you mean, you mean most people's concept where he's, he, where he's double, where he's double talking uh-huh. he, in his statement there. He's saying, yeah, yeah. Your dad would have loved to see that too. Meaning Sam It would have been great if Sam could have been here. So he's hiding the fact that he is Elizabeth's father from her in that statement. But yeah. in order for that to be true, you have to believe that the first statement of, I always lie, or you could say, well, it's not really a lie. It's a white lie. And that's where the audience loses their freaking love and minds because it's like, it's just- not, a, it's not a white lie. I don't see it as a white lie. When she asked him, if you're the father, it's not a lie. I don't see it as a white lie or any kind of lie. I see it as the truth. He does not consider him to be her father. He loves her. It's his daughter. He said that. So I think we're, we've got that one locked in that Elizabeth is red's daughter. That and I know it's under duress, so I guess you might not take it. I take it because I'm mostly because I'm tired of thinking about it, so I'm taking it. <laughs> but it's it's one of those things where I think it's more important why he's got to hide this so much, not because of your theory, but because of whatever actually happened, what the incident was, what what it all means, you know, the the deeper the root of it. But I don't consider him saying no, I'm not your father to be a lie. And I've said this on and off over the over the years we've been doing this podcast. It's all about if you consider someone who raises a child to be the father or if you consider just someone who has a child to be the father, which I don't. I do not consider someone who just has a child to be a dad. We say it all the time in the real world. You don't raise a kid. You're not really a father. That's what I think Red meant. And by every indication, that's what I've gotten. I like your theory. I enjoy the theory. It's entertaining. And I'm not dismissing it. And I'm not saying it's not possible. I didn't even talk about my theory yet. I'm just putting out the facts of... You've talked about your theory about 20 minutes of it. You have too talked about it. But the I, not in these last four clips. These last four clips, I've been trying to postulate, is he the father or is he not the father? Is he lying or is he not lying? I think you should go back and listen to the tape, Doc, because now, uh, you've totally been saying Katerina, Katerina, Katerina the whole time. But now I will put it all together for you and say Katerina, 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 because... When he says, granted, it is under duress, so we still have to take that with a grain of salt. He says, yes, she's my daughter, right? No, he says, yes, Elizabeth is my daughter. Elizabeth is my daughter. And then says, yeah, your dad would have liked that too. Past tense means that dad is dead. Because if you believe Red doesn't lie to Liz, then dad is dead. Nope. She's my daughter. Hence, the only way that Red could be, Elizabeth could be Red's daughter is that Red is... Katerina. No, because yes, it would be great if Sam could have been here to see that. And that and that's why I said it's not not hundred percent confirmed. It there, sure is. There are holes, <laughs> but it all depends There's on how so you want it. Many holes. And, and all of this is to say, at the end of the day, when the NBC promo said Liz will get the answer she wants, Liz got the answer she wanted. Kirk is not her father. She didn't get all the answers, but she got an answer. So that part said, of the- we we will get the answer we want. It's all been building to this. That's what it said. Right. The, but it's a promo. I don't take nothing. A promo says do I take as as and fact. and we did get the answer we wanted. Elizabeth is Red's daughter. But see, you're still not wanting to accept that he could just be Red Reddington. I mean, I think everybody wants it to be something way more deeper than it is. I am Maybe totally it's just the w- no, I, am, I am totally willing to accept that he's the father. I am totally willing to accept that. But then I have to go back to the is red lying or not concept to say, do I believe that because he could be lying about that too? Because at the very beginning of the show, he says, I'm a criminal. Criminals are notorious liars from the beginning. 
So, okay. so that, I get it. I, I'm not. So I, I'm not saying that the mother theory is 100 percent correct. I'm also saying I don't believe he's the father either because I don't know what to believe. So what I'm trying to say is, at the end of this, we still don't have a damn answer. Okay, so we've spent more than enough time on the Katarina thing. Can we can we please address for what most people think that he is her father? Sure. <laughs> can we do that? Play that for a little bit? Yeah. Go ahead. If if that's the theory you subscribe to, which we get it, you've established ninety nine percent. You well, my I'm ninety nine. Well, I'm ninety nine point nine percent sure that he is the father, and I'm accepting that mostly because honestly, it's been a, it's been that story point that has been debated for far too long. It is time to stick it and move on. In my mind, I think and we talked about that at the beginning of the season. That needs to be answered this season because I think it was really. A, it was starting to to drag. It's one of those things where if you play with an audience long enough, at some point you're going to start irritating them if you keep toying with them. So you have to give them answers. You can give them more questions, but you have to give them some answers as you go. I think we got our answer. My mind, as far as I'm concerned, I got the answer. Red's the dad. Now it's all about the why. Why is it so important to hide this secret? Why is it so important? So you've you've made your evidence. You made your case, lawyer. Let's go to the people who don't subscribe to that theory and say, what do you think could be so serious that would keep someone from that? Well, I wanna, that, would, well, that would make somebody want to hide that. I want to I wanna come back at your theory, though, because in order for your theory to be good, right, there's a couple things that ride on that. Number one, if Red doesn't lie to Liz, then you have to subscribe to the fact that this statement at the end of this episode is that he's talking about Sam. Mm-hmm. So in order for your theory to be that he's the father, you have to believe that. That's number one. Number, I saw it, believed it, didn't even think about it, anything else. Right. Even though I knew what you were thinking, I, I, I didn't I, think of anything else. Just so everybody in the in the audience in the in the fandom can actually put this all together, you, if you believe that Red is the father, you have to believe that Red is referring to Sam. If you believe that Red never lies to Liz, mm-hmm. that's the math, right? Correct. And then you also have to believe that if Red never, because in order for that to work, Red never lies to Liz, then that means that Red's father, biological father, did die when she was four. And the evidence that supports that is the whole, I've died before in Marrakesh, which means he could have also died in the fire for two minutes or something and come mm-hmm. back to life and resuscitated, which would not be a lie because he did die. So your theory is possible also. But you have to believe that math. You have to believe what's on screen only in order to make those work. So both the he's the father or the mother are both true, potentially. Well, except... I mean, you'd think Don would mention that, uh, well, you had a sex change. You know, I'm just saying. <laughs> Let's not forget about Dom either. We, everybody seems to conveniently forget. Uh, Grandpa's been in the picture, and he doesn't like Red because of his daughter dying. So, But that's yeah. that's where the alchemist comes in. If the alchemist didn't exist, the mother, okay, the yeah. mother We've theory talked, would completely you know what? be gone. I get it. We've talked about your theory to death. Let's talk about everybody else that doesn't believe that. <laughs> Because they need to get fair, fair, fair balance. Yes, yes. Uh, I totally do not see a problem with any of this. It, it just—it's more about what happened. What to me? To me, I want to know what happened that would make him need to lie about that. Exactly. That he would need to hide that. That he think it's worth killing Sam to protect that secret. You know, You're, it's worth killing. Anything? It's worth killing Kaplan to keep that secret. Uh, I don't think that's why he killed Kaplan. I don't think he was worried about the secret. It was the betrayal. He just had to because of the betrayal. And I think he regrets that, but you know, that's that's a next or last, last half of the season question that'll come up. So I think, you know, that, that may, what is the secret? What is so serious outside of your theory? Is there anything else you can think of that would be worth going to those those lengths to protect no because the only thing i can think of to go to these lengths would be i'm hiding from the kgb to have katarina turn herself into red like that's a that's the only thing i could come up with in my mind i think you won't let you won't look at any other theories man i'll be honest i I really think you aren't aren't willing to look at that i would absolutely love to look at other theories i think that's what's going to make the rest of season four potentially season five if it happens a really interesting show because now that we have an answer that Elizabeth is Red's daughter. I'm going to keep going with that line. <laughs> mm-hmm. That now we have to know why. Why is it so important to protect Liz? Like that that story is what I've been waiting for all season to get into with the cabal and Russia and the people that were chasing Katarina and Kate May. And that is the story I've been waiting to get to. And I'm so excited that we're finally here. 
that I have no idea why. And I'm really excited for the ride, to be quite honest. Yeah, I'm really curious where, where it's going to go. And I personally think the whispering was Katarina is alive. That would make him shake. And like we said, there's there's two or three different options for that to work. Um, but I'm really curious where they go from here because now we know that, you know, Red, Agnes is Red's granddaughter. And we we know – and I do – do you think people just don't want to accept that that's just the fact? That's the fact, Jack. Red is is her dad and it's done. Do you think people don't want to accept it? I mean certain like, – certain- Like you think – because when you did your thing with, with Boca Camp and Eisendrath, when you did that YouTube video, you, you interviewed them. Yes. And you talked about things. Eisendrath specifically said, even when we tell people straight up, here's what happened, people don't want to believe it, kind of like Troy. So <laughs> – so even when they do that, when they when they seem to be very um, welcoming of here here we gave you an answer one answer that you wanted, but people still don't want to accept it. Do you think maybe we maybe we're just rejecting what they're they're just handing to us on a silver platter? Yeah, and and that's the beauty of the golden age of television that we're in. We've been so, I guess, stylized and hyper focused on. Oh my gosh, the next great show. It's the next great show. There's got to be some big twist because it's the next great show. And because of that, we want to take things to places that they just don't need to be. And maybe that's the beautiful thing about this show. In the end, it's going to be the most simplest answer. And we're all going to be like, dude, why don't we see that from the beginning? Well, I will have seen it. I, yeah. I think you wouldn't be willing to accept I can accept no, a lot I, of things. I, I am. I, I, listen, when I read The Dark Tower by Stephen King, there are rules in that book that are set up on like page two. And because of that, when the ending came, I was completely like, oh my gosh, how did I not see that coming? Because the rules were there on page two. And so you that's why I went back to that that one statement in the very beginning. That defines the entire show. Either he is lying the whole time or everything about him is a lie, is truth. I I get that. Yep. Uh, I'm just really... Uh... So I'm just, I'm excited for the ride now. I am more excited about the show after this finale that I think I have been since, you know, Liz died in season three. How about that hug? Oh, that oh. sweet hug for him and Liz. And you get to see her face was like, Oh, I'm glad you're alive. And his is like, <gasps> <laughs> finally, finally I can show some emotion. That, then people will see it in a different way. Only for seven, so we'll, we'll see only it. for seven weeks though, because there's a new threat coming. I'm sure. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a new threat coming. I actually did see the promo. And I was like, oh, boy, we're already, it's 24. We're already back on that, huh? Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll see where it goes. But it could also be the promo. I've not uh, taken a lot from the promotional department this year. So I'm just going to watch the show as it airs and judge it by that. But that's fantastic. I think at the very, very least, I think the theories are narrowing uh, in terms of what everything could mean. Agree. Yeah, so which I think at this point in the show's run, you have to because if you just keep posing more questions, it becomes it becomes a lost situation where you get you start getting audiences frustrated, and I do like it. Even though everybody keeps sending me like interview articles and hey, Boca Camp did another interview. Boca Camp did this or that, and I'm like, man, I I can already tell you what the interview is going to be. The interview is going to be like need, I'm gonna, I'm yeah. you're going to believe what's on oh, screen. It's, good. I'm it's not up gonna there on the screen and da, da da da. I mean, I will give him credit when he's come on the show. He's been very um, welcoming at answering our questions, and he does answer them very directly. But during the season, man, he plays coy, <laughs> like nobody's business. And everybody's like, "Well, he says this." And I'm like, "What's he? What's he mean?" I think he means, "Ha ha!" You don't know what I mean. That's what I think he means. And uh, and he loves to he loves to play with expectations. So I already know what those interviews are going to be. So there you go, John. If you're listening, been, been we went to the screen. We played the clips. We have informed the fandom. <laughs> and, uh, and I'll say it one more time. You know, you've had, you've had your clips. I'm sorry, I didn't have any clips. I didn't know. I, I was told there would be there would be no clips. But you know, it's Troy just doing what Troy does. I told you to lawyer up. You just didn't come prepared. <laughs> I did come prepared. Kirk, Cooper, Dom. There's all, all you. That's all you need to say. No, it doesn't work. It's too. It's too ridiculous of a jump to buy it. So I'm gonna. So, I'm gonna go to your theory. Then your theory is that Cooper's behind it all, and maybe I like my theory. <laughs> and maybe Cooper was there when the whole four year thing happened with the alchemist getting the sex change and everything, and that's why Cooper's helping protect Red. Oh, uh, now you're just boy. Now you're just reaching. But desperate. I'm not desperate. So I'm just. Sad. I'm just trying to make desperate. you right too, so we can both be winners, right? We're, no, I don't. We're either, I don't we're either both going to be dead or both be alive by the end of this podcast. I'll, I will be perfectly honest with you. 
either one, I, w- I wouldn't be mad about either one. I really, I, I know some people would, which I get it. I think just because it's so far in left field, I wouldn't be mad if that was actually, I would think, I think that would be a very bold way to go. I just don't think it's plausible. It would take so much. They would have to do so many episodes explaining away a few things that I don't know if it's plausible. I, I just think sometimes we're reaching so hard we forget to just accept things as they are. That, That's what I think. That I can agree with. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, we talk about Westworld. My God. Oh, wow. Just, nobody still knows what that show is. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. And it's, that was just beginning and it's already been like a complete head swimmer. Yeah. But I do want to say, I, I want to make sure and give the, uh, the showrunners credit. This is, for all accounts and purposes, a basic procedural. I mean, with, with, with some serialized hey, hey, let, elements. Let's, let's say that it's a, no, no, it's no, a, it's no, a good let me procedural. It's not basic. Let me finish what I'm saying. It, the, the actual, the, the, the crux of the show, the basic plot of the show is very simple. Guy helps the FBI. We don't know why he's helping the FBI, but then each week we try to bring in some, some nefarious criminal. By all accounts and purposes, simple premise, except it's not. It's very detailed. It's very layered. And the fact that four years in, we're still talking about things and getting excited about things and debating things really goes to the show's success, in, in my opinion. And uh, our our faith and passion for the show itself, which doesn't happen a lot in TV. I mean, I can't – I'll be honest, on network TV – it's one of the very few shows I watch. Very few. There are maybe three network shows I will watch right now. And there's what? 50? 100? I don't even know what the number is. But there's like this – is, this is one of three that I will watch on network television, which I think is a testament, especially because it's 22 episodes. And don't, don't think it's just because I do the podcast because Troy knows. If I, if I didn't like the show, I would stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how I am. I'm not going to do something I don't enjoy. This show is very intriguing, and four and a half years in, we're still getting um, turned upside down by some of the things, and still not sure how some things are going to play out. And even I will tell you this, and I know I've been talking, and Troy's like, "God, you're talking as long as I don't normally talk." But when that conversation happened between the two of them, if it ends up not being that, I'm going to come back to this scene and say. Shh, I want to punch you guys in the face because all I saw while I'm watching it the first time I watched it was Troy's theory because I feel like it was written directly to that. Now, that also gives a lot of credence to Troy's theory. And I do think I, people have said that I don't believe it's possible. I do believe it's possible. I just think it's a stretch. Um, it, it could work. But while I'm watching it, the first time I watched it, that's all I heard was Troy's voice the entire time I was watching that episode. I'm like, oh, my God, all I hear are Katerina, 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 especially when Kirk's telling the story and he cuts him off with a dance. And I'm like, no, no, I just want I want it solidified. I wanted to kill it. And that's all I heard. I oh, it. it just pissed me off. <laughs> pissed me off. I've gotten in your minds. Yeah, it's it's in there. And hey, maybe they can. I, I think this team has a talented group of writers. They can probably figure out a way to explain some of the things that I'm, I brought up. <laughs> but the Naomi and the Jennifer thing, that's a big one. That's a big that one. That whole sequence away. still bothers me to this day. Like, I don't know what's it's been make... forgotten. It's been forgotten. Exactly. Yeah. It was like... kind of like a, a left out thing. And it could be like a second family. And like we said, and Jennifer could have been Naomi's daughter. And yeah, that, that, that part is weird. Weird. I, I just don't know how to put that into the scope of the show. I don't either, but for me, that's what kills your theory. Like, I'm just accepting it the way I see it. I'm not going to do the. I'm not going to be in. You're not going to go. You're camp. not going to go to the clips and try to prove it out. I'm not going to go full high rents now. No. I, I I think it's pretty straightforward in respects to yeah. He's he's the actual Red Reddington. He actually is her dad. That's decided. Now the why? Why why is she so important? Why is hiding her life so important? That's more what I'm focused on at this point. You're more focused on everything you hear being this this theory you have. I'm more focused on where I think the show is going. No, I just I, I like I like the fun. I like the fun in solving the mystery. And if I can be right at the end of a show for once in my <laughs> life, that would be fantastic. Because I have never been. That's right. really what it. That's really what it comes down to. I've that's watched I have watched so to. much television in my life that I have never been right, and I want to be so right so bad. <laughs> 
Uh, all right. Well, I think uh, we've talked about this about as much as you can. I'm sure we'll talk about it more like pr- before we come when we come back for the first episode. So show's not over. Don't go anywhere. But please remember to download the Blacklist Exposed app for iOS and Android and be sure to go even deeper into the mystery of Red Reddington by visiting our Blacklist partner site, uh, theblacklistnbc.com. No Reds rhetoric this week since we're going on break till January 5th. But 58 percent of you would love to take dance class with Red and Samar. So Red Jim won last week. We'll be back with Special Agent Intel right after this. What if you could live your life without limits, where every desire you ever imagined could be fulfilled? This fall, experience Westworld, a show where every human's dark side will be revealed. After watching each episode, listen to Beyond Westworld, a podcast featuring humans and hosts from around the park, diving deep into HBO's illustrative narrative. Every hero has a code, and so do you. Download your itinerary and the show at beyondwestworldpodcast.com or your podcast app of choice. All right, Special Agent Intel, what you guys thought of the fall finale. Matt Arnett, I didn't believe (laughs) Troy's crazy mom theory, as Aaron likes to call it, never did, but I'm very suspicious now. Under duress of torture... Red never told Kirk, yes, I'm Liz's dad. But he did say yes to Kirk, is Masha your daughter? Well, actually, he said, is Elizabeth. Well, Kirk said, Elizabeth Kirk is Kirk my said, daughter. is Masha your daughter? Yes, Kirk did, yes. And then Red said, yes, Elizabeth is my daughter. And that opens the door wide for Troy's theory to waltz right in. Uh, waltz, that's dancing. Get it? Yeah. Waltz. <laughs> nice job, Matt. Uh, I think that Red whispered this to Kirk. Katerina is not dead. I'm Katerina. That would definitely make me shake. <laughs> <laughs> so I get it. And then he told Kirk something that only Kirk and Katarina secretly knew to prove that Red is indeed Katarina. Okay, I forgot to address that one. That's what some people were saying to me. Well, no, only only Kirk would know that. Not true. I think it was established that Katarina was a dancer. And if no, Red no, he's saying, loved... He's saying as he whispered to him in the ear, said, oh, I'm Katarina. Oh, and that- by the way, remember that time that we did that thing? Oh, I thought he was talking about the the secret, the dancing thing. No, no. He says dancing. No, because that could be just because you know someone so much. No, Red, Red gave... You knew what they meant. Red gave Kirk okay. their code word. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so Kirk gave Red the anecdote, since he still loved Katarina, and then Kirk took off to the Blacklist Redemption to get redeemed. Uh, I this, The CRISPR antibodies that is discussed in the Dr. Adrian Shaw conclusion is real, but just like in the episode, still experimental, uh, Radio Lab having an, had an intriguing podcast on it. I wonder if Dr. Adrian Shaw injected Red with this before his torture scenes with Kirk. That might have been what Red, what kept Red alive and prov- provided immunity from Kirk's buffet of deadly injections. I don't know about the last part. The last part. Yeah, I don't know about stretch. the last part. Oh, now we have now you have a problem with something. <laughs> that's too far for you. My God, man. Well, why would Kirk inject himself with something that's not proven? Oh, my God. I And I totally agree. There are very few things that would stop Kirk, but I'm Katarina. It would stop me because I'd have to be like, what, wait, what? The whole fan, and the I whole did, fan I would actually, stop in their tracks. I actually did think uh, Red kissed him in that moment. I'm like, did he just make out with him? What just happened? Looked like it. It shot very dark. <laughs> All, All right. right. Where, All where right. Uh, Diane in SoCal. Red is so the mother. Oh, my God. I've been waiting for that question. Is she your daughter instead of are you her father? I have brought, I have bought into your theory for quite some time now, Troy, and it is happening. Sorry, Aaron. Uh, yeah, and I, you know what? I'm seeing it all over Reddit. Everybody's like, I have this theory. I'm like, man, you don't have this theory. I know where that theory started. Right. I mean, right I, here in this chair, or at least publicized. I mean, I don't think you, you might not be the very first person to, to throw it out there. I don't know. Oh, I was the first. It's the first, first time I ever heard it was from Troy Heinrichs. I will go on record. Uh, All right. Karen from Cincinnati was nice enough to call in, so let's hear that. Hey, this message is for Troy. This is Karen from Cincinnati, Ohio, um, otherwise known as Miller Time 66 on Twitter. All I have to say after watching the blacklist tonight, um, Troy, you're going to be very, very happy. The theory lives on. It's pretty much confirmed. Red is Katarina. Love it. Take care. Bye. It's like, not confirmed. It's not confirmed. <laughs> I will say it's not confirmed. Oh, it's not confirmed. But, but I, I do appreciate like, the love. I really do. 
I do like that even Entertainment Weekly asked about it. I know. I was like, yes, someone else in mainstream media is finally coming around. And he just, and of course, John responded, hey, it's a wild theory. I've heard that one. Yeah, you've heard it. (laughs) Yeah. Dance. Dance, monkey. Dance. All right. Gene Grasso, Jr. I hope I said Grasso, Grasso. So many questions. Is Red Liz's father? What did Red say to Kirk to stop him? Is Katarina alive? Is Red's Liz, man, I'm going to hear about this in every email. All right. Is Red's, <laughs> Red Liz's mom, and that's why Kirk had that look? Oh, Blacklist, you make me crazy. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Alan Purdy, I absolutely refuse to believe that Red is Katarina. Gross. And the theory that Liz isn't Masha still works. He wouldn't say that he was Masha's father, but he admits that Elizabeth is her daughter. That's what I'm that's what I'm going with. Yep. That's what I believe. Uh, Marcelli Sierra. Thought just occurred to me, Troy Heinrichs. What if Fred was whispering that he was Katarina and that's why Kirk let him go? I'm th- I'm glad you brought it up because I don't think Troy was was thinking that at all. Not at so, all. Yeah. Mm-mm. Uh, sigh. Not going to lie. You had me for a moment there, Blacklist. I was enjoying that second of pure ecstasy of finally, finally getting a definitive answer. But then came the stabbing realization that Red's word can be interpreted a bazillion ways, and the only emotion left within me now is confusion. The writers were right in saying that answering one one question opens up a whole bunch of others. But not only do I have new questions with this new information, but all my old questions are still waiting to be answered with much more impatience. (laughs) Wow. It's just like, it all depends on how you interpret everything. The whole show. It's crazy. Uh. Finally, finally, something backs me up. Thank God. <laughs> yep, Aaron Kirk knew them both. Wait, from Marta, say who it's from? I, did, oh, I was okay. from Marta oh, sh- Bolden. Marta Bolden. Yep, Aaron Kirk knew them both back in the day as separate people. Science, science. But I do feel bad for Troy. <laughs> Maybe they'll cook up a cool fake mommy theory story someday to ease the pain before the big reveal. So, looking forward to the podcast on this one. Third main theory strongly in pay. Third man, the imposter third man, theory. Third man theory, strongly in play. The that, imposter that, the, theory. No, the um, Reddington and the American are different people. In which case, oh. the American would be Liz's father that was shot in the fire. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Carol Landers. When Red mentioned that Katarina danced, it made me think of the ballet he goes to every year. Did Dan? Did Liz dance like her mother, or was a little girl the red herring, and it was a memory of a ballet that she saw with Katarina, or maybe she used to be a dancer. anyone see the prestige of quantico here's a new crackpot theory oh thank god we need a new one uh red had a twin that he switched places with for spying they both had an affair with katarina liz is his brother's daughter and liz killed his brother her father red's brother yeah and red took her brother's place maybe he is ted reddington (laughs) (laughs) i love it that's awesome i like that because i did originally say that he was the uncle the uncle what i originally thought red the uncle theory is in play I I like it, even though that makes them really gross as brothers, but whatever. Whatever. (laughs) Uh, Ella Bauer, I'm beyond happy. This episode was amazing. Since the pilot, I thought that Red was her father, and I'm so glad they went with this. I understand all the analyzing of the words, etc., and usually I do the same, but I think this answer needs to be taken at face value. Thank God. Yes. (laughs) <laughs> under, with du- you. under duress but okay i'm with you i think the only reason he said that he, uh, sorry i think the only reason he said what he said to liz while he was holding agnes at the end was to ensure that she still doesn't learn that he's her father mm-hmm. there was still so much evidence that red is her father apart from him saying so and i still think he never outrightly lies to liz perhaps by omission but not outrightly Besides all that, I was so happy to see Liz being nice to Red and actually caring about him. Those scenes were beautiful. I am one happy Blacklist fan today. Me too. Um, Deborah Jean, when Red said, or I'm sorry, when Red told Liz that... When Red told or, Kirk. <laughs> man, I, I got so excited that somebody was with me. So <laughs> I, I just lost my train of thought. Deborah Jean, when Red told Kirk that Liz is his daughter, Sarone also tweeted that Red was telling the truth. So whether he's Red or he's Katarina, Liz is still his daughter. I think we've covered that one ad nauseum. And Liz, at the end, she's already she already should know. Her mother wrote about it in her journal, and if she doesn't know, she's surely going to do a DNA test now. And I don't think Red is Katarina. If Red were, he couldn't admit to being Liz's father. Uh, he didn't. 
He didn't. Yeah, he didn't. And Daniel will be tweeting that he's telling the truth. He's one or the other. He can't be both, which is why we had the actual clip on the show so that we could, people could hear it. It, He actually just said the Elizabeth line. So correct. Elizabeth is my daughter. And then Daniel Mm -hmm. said, he's telling the truth. If you believe Twitter, (laughs) (laughs) if you believe the angry, angry Twitter. Hey, all right. Rory said, I thought it was a phenomenal episode, Troy and Aaron, but I'm really not sure where we got the answers. We mo- I'm not sure we got the answers we most wanted. Remember in the interview, John said that they had put the red being her father to bed, and now we get this. Was there a change? Is it misdirection, or do we really know? Red was being tortured, so he said what needed to be said. He has great love for Lizzie, but is, her- is he her father is still unanswered. I was always of the opinion that when he told her, no, your father died, that he was speaking of himself being shot by her and becoming someone else. Figuratively, not physically. Yep, me too. Uh, He said no because he didn't raise her, so he was not her father, but now nothing makes sense. The question of the week or the next two months is what did Red whisper to Kirk to allow Red to walk away? I think he may have told him that Katarina is still alive or maybe that Masha is still out there hidden safely. For now, we can only ponder and speculate what the heck is going on with this blacklist now, as usual. Uh, I am uh, taking it at face value. I am saying that, uh, yes, everything you just said is correct. And I believe Masha is still out there and Liz is not actually the real Masha. That's where I'm at at this point. So you're at the two child theory. I I think it's the only thing that that works that's not your theory. So, yes. Okay. (laughs) Or Katarina's still alive. Or Katarina is still alive, yeah. But but then that would I, mean I, that Red lied to Liz because Red said her mother died. Unless she's referring to Sam Mahone's wife, blah, 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 blah. No, no, I I, I think, um, well, that does bring up a problem, doesn't it? It sure does. Um, did he ever actually say she died? Yeah. There was that whole like thing at season oh, three. Yeah, it's yeah, like, you mother, told me my mom died. Your mother's dead. Well, then wouldn't it be a, a lie if uh, he was Katarina? No, because... The per- oh, the person- oh, now we can find a little loophole. Is that what we're saying? Well, you have to, hmm. because it's the same theory, right? The person that I was. you want that theory. You want it. You want it so I do bad. want it. I'm just <laughs> going to the tape. All right, we got it. Nate Trillo, this episode was a trip and a half, but my thoughts may be different than what others are saying. I had a particular statement on this comment thread of the episode two weeks ago, and Red said the same thing this week. It tripped me out so much to hear Red say my words, but I'll get to that comment in a minute. LMG! What is going on with Wrestler? Uh, apparently, he thinks he's Jack Bauer now. That's what's going on. He's breaking the rules and not breaking a sweat or ruining his hair. That was wild. The whole plan to get Kirk and Liz out of the hospital was kind of blah. Give us more. Give us some stakes, a real sense of danger. I don't get why Dembe was worried about Red. Uh, well, because I think he really believed Kirk would kill him. They didn't have Red's- a woman at that point. So, I mean, yeah, I'd be worried too. Yep. Red's plan had been telegraphed over the last few episodes that it was obvious that Red was going to save Kirk's life. I did enjoy how Red wasted time while he was being tortured. Now back to what I mentioned earlier. Last week, I I was wondering if Kirk is not Liz's father, and Red says he's not her father. Does it matter who the father is? Nope. Kirk, Kirk kept torturing and asking Red if he was Liz's father, and Red said that it doesn't matter. Why don't we get that? Even Kirk didn't want to believe it. Red only said yes to delay. That's all. Red has been telling the truth to Liz and us the entire time. What do I think he said to Kirk? I think he said he's not the father and Katerina is alive. Why is Katerina alive? Because all signs pointed to that before Kirk stepped into the picture. Kirk has been distracting us and Red the entire time. Liz's connection to Red has to be so much bigger than father-daughter. We need to move past this whole daddy stuff and into on to 2017. There's a whole new realm of the blacklist that we need to explore. Love it. It's great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was great. Yeah. Uh, Alexander Meyer. Well, so much for my dream of killing daddy gate. <laughs> wow. <laughs> such, such anger and hate. Uh, and yet Kirk did not run a red Liz DNA test opting for taking red at his word which is either crap writing or same as Kirk's the dad last season. This is something that they want us to believe until they tell us otherwise. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the same thing I did last season. Keep sticking with my gut, which says to believe what Red tells Liz. The real father was someone shocking. That's what Red told Kirk to change his mind. It isn't Red. Red first lied to Kirk. She's my daughter in hopes of keeping it a secret. And only when faced with actual death, did he let the secret out. It does play into Red being Katarina beautifully. Love you, Troy. 
But now my working theory is that the father was one of Katarina's marks, someone even Red is terrified of. It's cool. I like that concept, too. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love the episode, and I'll love future ones as long as they have a lot of Mr. Spader in them, but it does feel like I'm watching the same story over and over. I hope in spring we can get more variety. Looking forward to your take. You always notice something I've missed. Winky face. Yeah, Yeah, I do. I do think we got to put the baby and the Liz being kidnapped to bed for the rest of the season. Yes. Uh, It's pretty much been eight episodes. We can move past that. Yeah, I said I actually want to go back to the uh, creepy black blister of the week concepts. Yeah, that would be cool. That would be cool. Just for a break from my head. I'm now uh, 95%, and I would, like, I wish somebody would just be like, yes, he is her dad, or, eh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Until John calls us up on the phone and says, Troy, shut up about the mother theory, it's wrong. Or, yes, he's the dad, fine, blog, done. <laughs> ah, so if you if you hear Troy not mention it anymore, you know what happened. He yep. got a call. John called me. Sophie Blomquist, uh, Blom- Blomquist, I'm, uh, you get what I'm saying. Yes, Sophie. I am now 95% on board with Troy Heinrich's mom theory. My God, it's everywhere. At this point, it's the only one I could think of that makes any sense given everything, except all the evidence against it, but whatever. What else could he have whispered that would explain Kirk's 180? That being said, I truly hope that isn't the case. I hope they've got something much smarter up their sleeve. I don't know, man. I do think that's kind of smart. It's really smart. Uh, I just wish they wouldn't have done the Game of Thrones this whisper. Me too. Meaning they answer everyone's biggest question with an inaudible whisper. Mm-hmm. I am with you on that one. I do wish it would have been cemented. But I also think, my mind, they did cement it. And that's just an, what he whispered is something else that isn't part of that. That's why I wish you would have given him a truth serum in that whole drug cocktail. Because mm-hmm. then we would have known he was telling the truth. But because they never said he got a truth serum... <laughs> it's a TV out is what that is. It's a That's TV, a TV out. out. Yes, it yep. is. Uh, last one. TC Casa said, great episode. Great episode con- clouded with an ending I cannot trust. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody says. <laughs> there has been so much back and <sighs> forth on who Lizzie's father is. And in the last three weeks, that's I'm not sure what my own name is anymore. My head is spinning so much. Mm-hmm. If Red really is the dad, don't know what to believe, but I doubt he is. That means anything he has said to Lizzie since day one can be a lie. I was living life going on belief that, as Red said, he never lies to Lizzie. I still believe it. It still holds, but we've talked about that. This is what the show has been built on from the beginning. I mean, listen, it makes sense if he is the dad, because why else would he have gone through and continue going through everything for her life if he wasn't? Unless he's the mom. Okay. I added that in there. (laughs) No, really. Shocker. Shocker. We have never really been given any other reason, I thought, from day one. Like a lot of people, I'm sure, that Red is the dad. But I moved on from that because Red said he never lies to Lizzie. If Red is the dad, it's kind of disappointing in a way because like, we kind of knew the answer all along. But I just can't believe it. Can't believe it. It's been that obvious all along. (laughs) Don't know what Red told Kirk, but my guess is that he informed him that Katerina did not kill herself and that he knows where she is. Maybe she was given a new identity like Dr. Shaw. Or maybe told him that Tom is his kid. Is that how Tom is written off? Him and Kirk and his mother are on the spinoff? Eh, I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like honestly. that either. Yeah, that would be too much interconnection. Yeah. Uh, plus, that would mean that, yeah. Plus, that would mean when Kirk hired Scotty to go after Liz, Scotty would have known that Kirk was a baby, da- baby daddy at some point, right? Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, yeah yeah Uh, man my head hurts now at this point so i can't think anymore i need a drink (sighs) i'm gonna go have one buddy this is uh i told you that's why we went through the original characters quicker because i knew that would take forever because troy had 45 minutes of one theory and i got about five minutes of the one everybody else believes so (laughs) that's how that worked but I think it's going to do it for this episode. Man, we will be back in the spring or early winter. I'm sorry, winter. winter January winter. 5th. Yeah, January yeah. 5th. So keep an eye out for that. I don't know. Maybe we'll have an interview up before then. So keep checking the feed. You just never know. That means but if you're listening on the website, you need to subscribe in your podcast player. So that way you don't miss the episode. Because if you're not paying attention to fa- uh, the Facebook groups or Twitter during the uh, break here, you won't know unless you're subscribed to the feed. So make sure you subscribe in your podcast player or in iTunes. That would be a great way to know if we get anybody to talk to before January. And ask them questions they won't answer. 
All right. Yeah. Well, that's going to conclude this episode. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at the Blacklist GSM, where we live tweet during the East Coast feed, and we use the show's hashtag, the Blacklist. Don't forget to follow us on Tumblr, Instagram, and join the Facebook group as well. A lot of conversation over this episode out there. So see what everybody else is saying. Just search for the Blacklist Exposed. Talk about the show, the podcast, and whether or not you want to join the team. Mommy train. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen from the website. But if you're really on the go, make sure you download our app for iOS and Android, powered by Spreaker. You can also find all the intel and analysis about this episode for Dr. Adrian Shaw, the conclusion, by visiting theblacklistexposed.com. You can also, if you want to hear Troy and us, Troy and us, Troy and myself. <laughs> yeah, for a few, the, a few more weeks. A few more weeks, beyondwestworldpodcast.com, or just find Beyond Westworld in your podcast app of choice. We're talking about the HBO series Westworld. It's a great also show. Also a Facebook group that's huge, huge right now, so go check that out too. But uh, don't forget... Big thanks for listening, as always. Guys, thanks for listening to all of this nonsense. And just remember, I got nothing. Yeah, just remember something, whatever. Because I, I don't know what anything means anymore. Just remember, we all love the same show. Be nice to everybody. It's the holiday season. That's right. Say thank you to your Lizington friends. Say thank you to your Daddy Gate friends. Say thank you to your Mommy Gate friends. And just thank all the writers and everybody for putting on something that we love and can talk about every single week. Absolutely. And a big thanks for listening. Send our Christmas presents. Uh, get a hold of us. We'll give you the address. All right. <laughs> Don't forget to answer our uh, profiling question. What did Red tell Kirk? What did Red tell Kirk? I'm Batman. <laughs> you got, I'm Batman. That would work. <laughs> I would buy that before I would get arena at this point. Oh, just kidding. Just kidding. All right. That's going to do it, guys. I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season. Yeah, we'll see you January 7th. Fifth for the show, seventh for the podcast. Take care. What kind of underwear do you think Red wears? Until next time, I'm Agent Troy Heinrichs. That's at Troy Heinrichs on Twitter. And if you want to learn more about me, just visit, well, about.me slash Troy Heinrichs. And I'm Agent Aaron Peterson. You can hear me talking about movies and TV on the Hollywood Outsider podcast, as well as remake this movie right we are available at thehollywoodoutsider.com or on Twitter at H underscore Outsider. Be sure to subscribe, download the app, submit your feedback, but most importantly, keep yourself off of The Blacklist. The Blacklist Exposed is a Golden Spiral Media production. Find more of our great podcasts at goldenspiralmedia.com slash podcasts.